Hello, this is Dr. Brown. In this short video, we're going to cover, uh, in a nutshell, the things you'll need to know for test four. We will show you how to work all kinds of triangle problems. The first triangle that we already know how to work is uh, uh, when it's a right triangle with uh, angle C being 90 degrees. And I'm sure you'll recognize the Pythagorean theorem, which says that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which means that if you know uh, any of the sides, any two of the sides of a right triangle, you can always calculate the third using the Pythagorean theorem. The other thing that you need uh, to know is that the two acute angles, A and B, in the right triangle add up to 90 degrees. That makes sense because we know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So when we add the right, uh, the right angle to it, we'll get 180. The other thing that you need to know in order to solve uh, a right triangle is Sakatoa. And uh, basically this means that the sine of an angle is equal to the side opposite the angle divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is equal to the side adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And finally, the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. I really want to emphasize that you need to draw a picture uh, of the problem and label everything. On tests, I'd like for you to show your work, and you may even get partial credit if you uh, made a slight error. I'm going to work a very uh, quick problem here. Point X is a hundred feet from the base of a tower. So I'm going to lay out a hundred feet here, and um, a tower is drawn here, and the angle of elevation uh, to the top of the tower is 70 degrees, so we're going to label um, the angle 70 degrees. This is the angle of elevation, and we want to find out uh, how tall the tower is, so we will label uh, the tower to be X uh, feet tall, and this will be the opposite of 70 degree angle, and 100 feet will be the adjacent side of the 70 degree angle. And so we can now calculate very quickly uh, the tangent of 70 degrees. X, which is opposite over adjacent, which is 100, is equal to the tangent of 70 degrees. The way to solve this is to cross multiply, and we get x equal 100 tangent of 70 degrees. And putting this in your calculator, remembering to put your calculator in the degree mode, you get x is equal to 274.7 feet. Now we're going to talk about how to solve all triangle problems, even those that are not right triangles. Notice that we will continue to label all the angles and the sides. You know how to do that. You know that A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. This is essential that you know that so that when you solve for two angles, you can get the third angle by subtracting the sum of the two that you have. Now, the new techniques we're going to use to solve these triangles that are not uh, right triangles is to use either the law of sines or the law of cosines. We're going to talk about the law of sines first, 
and then we'll talk about the law of cosines. Now, this is the law of sines, and it simply says that a triangle with sides A, B, and C in lowercase, with opposite angles A, B, and C in uppercase, that sine A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. Now notice that um, if we look at the expression sine A over A equals sine of B over B, that if we know angle A, if we know angle B, and if we know side B, then we have just one unknown in one equation. And what we will do is cross multiply. If we cross multiply, we get A sine of B equal B sine of A. And to solve for A, we divide by sine of B. And so we get that A is equal to B sine of A over sine of B. Now we get that the other angle C is just going to be 180 minus A minus B. And to find C, we look at this combination. We'll use uh, to find C. We will cross multiply and get sine of B times C. equals sine of C times B. And we can solve for C by dividing by sine of B. And I'm going to put uh, side B in front of sines, uh, in front of sine of C. So little C is equal to B sine of C. divided by sine of B. And that solves the triangle problem when you have uh, two angles at a side. Now, the other case is if B a and little b are given. We want to find angle A. Well, let's cross multiply again and uh, we'll get B sine of A equal A sine of B. And since we want to find angle A, we'll first find sine of A and get that sine of A is equal to A sine of B over B. And once you calculate this expression with your calculator, the angle A we're looking for is equal to the inverse sine of that calculation. Now, it turns out that uh, depending on parameters, we may end up having uh, no triangle, uh, one triangle with angle A1 and another triangle with angle A2. And we'll see that in the next slide.
how are we going to choose the value of angle A given that we have angle B and side B and side A? First of all, you need to remember that if sine of A comes out to be more than one, then there is no triangle. I can't emphasize this enough. I know a number of you have missed problems on tests in which the sine of an angle or cosine of an angle was more than one, and uh, you did not realize that uh, that was impossible. However, if sine of A is between zero and one, there it turns out there may be one or possibly two solutions for the angle A. So we may have two triangles. First of all, we're going to calculate A equal inverse sine of A from the law of sines. Now, we will postulate two solutions for A. We'll call them A1 and A2. Now, the first solution, A1, will be uh, A that was calculated from the inverse sign. And A2, as we'll see in a second, will be 180 degrees minus uh, A. And look over here at the unit circle to illustrate how you calculate uh, A2. Well, the first A that you calculate is shown here, and that's the one you calculate uh, with your calculator using the inverse sign. You'll remember, though, that the y value on the unit circle is equal to the sign. So if um, there is another point on the unit circle in which the y value is the same, and that's directly across uh, from the other angle, and so A2 whose angle, whose sign will be the same value that we calculated, will be 180 degrees minus uh, capital A. So uh, we need to calculate, first of all, uh, A1 and then A2 is 180 minus A, which is A1. Then we can calculate C1, which is 180 minus A1 minus B. This will work, and there will be at least one triangle. Then you calculate C2 would be 180 minus A2 minus B. If that is more than zero, there are two triangle solutions. If C2 is less than zero, there's only one solution. Uh, because A2 is too large to leave room for an angle C. So we'll calculate A1 equal inverse sine of A. B is given. So we calculate C1 is equal 180 minus B minus A1. And calculate A2 is 180 degrees minus a1, and that capital C1, the other angle, is 180 minus B minus A2. If this is uh, more than zero, then we have two solutions. Now, then we will Use the law of signs to 
off the light. The other uh, side, C1 and C2 for the two triangles. Next, we have the law of signs, which allows us to complete uh, all the tools in our repertoire for calculating uh, triangles. The law of signs is given in two different forms here. Uh, the first form it looks just like the Pythagorean theorem itself. It has some correction when which allows the angles A, B, and C not to be 90 degrees. If A, B, or C were 90 degrees, then it would revert back to the Pythagorean theorem. And you will use the law of cosines. For instance, if you know side A and side B and the angle between them, you can calculate uh, side C using the first equation. If you have um, side C and side B and angle A, you can use the third um, equation. And if you knew uh, sides A and C and angle B, you can use the second equation. And um, and finally, if you have all sides but no angles, then you use one of these formulas to calculate the cosine of the three angles and then take the inverse cosine to calculate the angles themselves. And that basically completes how you solve the sides and angles of a triangle. The last topic is very simple, how to find the area of any triangle. And I am sure uh, you know that uh, if you know the height of a triangle, you probably heard this for a long time. The area denoted by capital K of a triangle is equal to one half the base times the height. Now, you won't all the will not all the time have the height of a triangle, and you want to be able to calculate the area if, for instance, you were given two sides and the angle between them. So notice we have these three other equations. For instance, if you know um, side A and side B and the angle between the two sides, the area is one half the product of the two sides times the sine of the angle between them. If you know B and C, the area is one half BC times sine of A, and the same for, if you know AC, the area is one half AC times sine of B. Now, to wind things up, if you know all three sides, there is Heron's formula to help you calculate uh, the area of uh, the triangle. You first add up all of the sides sum the sides, and take one half of that, and that's called S. Then you plug that S into this formula, and it gives you the area of the triangle. And that is the end of this video.